Hi, welcome to True Creeps, where the stories are true and the creeps are real. We'll cover stories from grotesque gore to the possibly plausible paranormal, to horrifying history, to tense and terrible true crime, and everything else that goes bump in the night. We're your hosts, Amanda, and I'm Lindsay, and we want you to join us while we creep. We cover mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, everyone, and happy spooky season. This week, we are starting our Halloween shorts because we thought it would be a lot of fun to go over some of the smaller things that we wanted to research. Bite-sized. Bite-sized. Yeah, bite-sized uh, topics that we didn't think would make quite a full episode, but we've been interested in. Yeah, I think that each one that we have scheduled is a completely different vibe, which I really like. Yes, they are. And then you get a couple episodes this week, which is kind of fun too. Yeah, yeah. Well, what are we talking about today, Amanda? Curses. We love our curses, right? We do love a good <laughs> curse. The first thing that we're going to talk about today is the cursed phone number. There is a phone number that people believe is cursed. And the owners of this particular phone number have all died. And of course, we'll tell you the number at the end. But the first owner of this particular phone number was the CEO of Mobitel, Vladimir Grazhnov. And interestingly, the company that issued this phone number to Vladimir was the company he was CEO of. And unfortunately, Vladimir died of cancer in 2001, but he was only 48 years old. And there were rumors that his cancer was caused by a business rival using radioactive poisoning. Interesting. That sounds terrifying. It sounds scary. Yes. The second victim to this phone number was named Konstantin Dimitrov, and he was a Bulgarian mafia boss. He owned a $775 million drug smuggling empire, but he was killed in 2003 by an assassin in the Netherlands. What had happened was he had gone to inspect his drug empire. While he was eating, he was shot. And he was just 31 years old, but he did have his phone on him when he died. Yikes. I don't like this. The third person that had died while owning this number was Konstantin Dishliev. And he was a real estate agent, but he was also a secret drug lord. He was running a cocaine trafficking operation, which is interesting to me, too, that like the last two had such similar businesses, I guess, right? Those happen to be professions where you're more likely to meet an aggressive end. Right. But like not the CEO of the company. That's completely different vibe there. But he was killed in 2005 outside of an Indian restaurant located in Sofia, which is Bulgaria's capital. Konstantin was the final owner of the number. And after his death, it was temporarily suspended during the investigation. But then later, they full-on deactivated it for good. And if you attempt to call the number, you'll hear a quote-unquote outside network coverage message. Hmm. And just in case you want to make sure, you know, you don't own the number, no one you know has ever owned this number, uh, it is a number from Bulgaria, and it's 0888-888-888. Dislike. So it's like pretty easy to remember number. That's also probably why people noticed it because it was all eights. Yeah, it's not like a bunch of different numbers. It's literally the same one. And some people, I guess, in certain cultures view eight as like a lucky number. Mm. So some people like like that type of number from other cultures. And then this one's like, this is a bad number. But when Mulbatel was contacted about the number, they would not comment and they said that, well, we're not going to discuss individual numbers, but they, they didn't want to like comment about what was going on with it either. I also assume that they don't have a lot of records. They're not like, and the owner died. <gasps> the last call they made was this, you know, like. Right. They're not going to talk about it either if they did. I think it has less to do with them covering something up than it does like them being like, we don't keep records on people who die with a cell phone number. Right. But it's interesting that they just like stopped activating it for other people. So what do you think? Is it coincidence or is it cursed? I think it's a coincidence. Yeah, I had a hard time with this one being a full on curse, but a lot of people now are like afraid of it. So maybe it is a curse. We've talked in instances before where there's like, oh, it seems as though these people are cursed because there's a group of people where bad things happen to them. But bad things happening to you is literally part of the human experience. Right. But okay, it's finally happened, everyone. There is a cursed chair that we're going to talk about. I hate it. Now, we're very happy that it's not a rocking chair because otherwise I don't think Amanda could stomach it. No, I couldn't. <laughs> and this chair, 
gloriously is named the chair of death. And it's made of oak and it looks pretty much like a chair, you know? Yeah. But it has a pretty spooky past. And the chair was owned by Thomas Busby. I don't ever consider myself the owner of my chairs. I just don't <laughs> think of myself as a chair woman. Da -da -sh. You know, a woman of beverages, perhaps. I'm a woman of beverages, not a chair woman. <laughs> So, anywho, the chair of death was owned by Thomas Busby. And in 1702, Thomas Busby brutally murdered his father-in-law, Daniel Alty. They ran a counterfeiting business together. And there was some disagreement about the business. And the following day, Daniel went to visit Thomas and Elizabeth at their inn. And Elizabeth was Daniel's daughter. There are varying accounts of what happened. Some say he came just to visit, while others believe he was there to take Elizabeth. Yeah. So when Daniel arrived, Thomas was out with friends. And I've seen some accounts saying that he was at like a party. And then when Thomas got home, he saw Daniel sitting in his favorite chair. Oh, <gasps> shit. Right. <laughs> All I think of is Big Bang Theory, like Sheldon's spot mm -hmm. on the couch. Wait, do you not have a spot on your couch? We fight over the good spot. There's one good spot on the couch. Now you have to you have to find your couch match. I'm the corner. Ben is a side sitter. So I should leave him is what you're saying? Because we, do, we don't. <laughs> I mean, look, him. apparently you're taking Ben already in Mexico, <laughs> changing your last name to Charlotte. <laughs> Mike and I are like, I guess they're leaving us. <laughs> well, I have to ask, is he going to sit on what side of the couch, I guess? He's going to sit as a side sitter. You get the good spot whether it's on the Chase Lounge. Or in the corner of the sectional. See, like, I like the corner of our sectional, and that's where I like to be. Yeah. But if Mike gets there first, that's where he is. No, you need to have designated spots. You need to get rid of this couch and start fresh. Text him. Text him now. No, you need to get... Look, when you move to Maryland, you need to get rid of that. I mean, also, don't bring a couch to Maryland. It's way too far. You just buy a new couch for the price of that. But you need... When you're shopping for couches, you need to clearly say, this is my spot. That is your spot. Get out. Yeah. We bought couches in, with that in mind. Maybe <laughs> you need a U-shaped couch so there's two corners. You know what? Probably. That would be, that would be better. I need a bigger living room first. But... Lindsay bought me this cute um, tray table and we don't have a coffee table. Once Oliver started walking, we vetoed coffee tables forever. I don't know. Yeah, because the corners are terrifying. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, puppy would eat it either way. But the, I always have that tray right there so I could sit my drink there. Mm -hmm. But then we fight over it because we both want the tray. He'd still spill everything. Uh, Oliver and I have a joke because if we do something too many times, we change the last name of that person. And Mike currently is Med Spilly. Oh, Med Spilly. That's very cute, though. Yeah. And Oliver, oh, God. I think he's Med Droppy right now because he drops stuff so frequently. What are you? Uh, Oliver said, I'm Med Smarty. Oh. And Mike gets really mad. <laughs> Well, also, uh, uh, tell them what tell them what you've taught your child to do when he does something that isn't the brightest. It's so fucking rude. It's so fucking rude. <laughs> <laughs> so when my husband drops something, that's something that every human in this world does. But <laughs> yeah, it's nothing out of this world right it's just like ordinary he is kind of clumsy like he's a little more clumsy than usual like most people so uh i started saying like what do you have circus music in your head like when he does something crazy and now i played it a couple times that's my fault i played it a couple times i'm like alexa play circus music like when he drops something or he's known to break everything that i buy that is breakable i bought this adorable pumpkin cookie jar and it's broken um, but anyways, so Oliver heard, and now when he does something, he goes, do, 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 do. <laughs> Can you imagine how pissed you would be if the roles were reversed? Oh, yeah. Like, wouldn't you be, like, ungodly mad? Like, you're just having a bad fucking day. You drop something. Your kid starts doing that. Like, like just, like, the craziest eyes. You know what I mean? But, like, hilarious. I love it, though. Hilarious. Anyway, let's uh, get back to this sad story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so when Thomas got home, right, he saw Daniel in his favorite chair, like we said. That bitch. A fight took place and Daniel, realizing that Thomas was drunk, decided I'm just going to end it, be the bigger person and go home. You're telling me he didn't realize it immediately when, when Thomas was pissed about a fucking chair? <laughs> he loved his chair. So... Thomas followed Daniel home, and once there, he attacked Daniel with a hammer. 
When Daniel's body was found, Thomas became the prime suspect. And he went to trial for murder, obviously, and he was ultimately executed. So for his execution, his last wish was that he asked if he could go inside his inn and have one last drink. While there, he went to his favorite chair. And what the stories say is that he cursed it. Whoever would sit in that chair would die horribly. I've also seen a couple varying stories that he cursed the chair right before he went to be executed. Not that he went in there and had this drink, but either way, he cursed this chair. He was then executed by hanging, and it was next to his inn. His poor fucking wife lost her father. Right? This trauma. Yeah. So after his execution, his corpse was suspended in chains near the inn for a few days. The inn later was renamed Busby Stoop Inn. Woof. Like, I guess people could stand there and see his body from the stoop. And the new owner of the inn used the chair as, like, a tourist attraction. Here's the thing. Like, if that was me, that chair would immediately become firewood. I would not be keeping that chair. No. Well, I mean, if they thought it was just a silly story, maybe. But then, like, maybe once what we're going to talk about happened, maybe take it away after that. Yeah. So many of the residents believe that the curse was real because there were many deaths that occurred after his curse. And the first recorded death linked to the chair happened after a man and his friend visited the pub and both, at points in the night, sat in the chair. One of the men never made it home. He, his body was found the next morning hung from a tree. But later, on his deathbed, the friend admitted to robbing and murdering him. But, like, he still sat in the chair. So, like... Yeah. Yeah. That, that counts. That counts. I'll allow it. Did that? Is that why his friend decided to do the thing? Yeah. Of course. Was it the curse in action? Yeah. And then, in World War II, several soldiers who sat in the chair didn't return home from war. A chimney sweep wanted to test the curse in 1894. And so, he was sitting in the chair while he was drinking at the inn. And the next day, he was found hanging from a post in front of the inn. And it was ruled a suicide, likely just to stop the spread of gossip. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Yeah. And these aren't in any sort of like chronological order. Yeah. These are just accounts that came up at various times. So another one is an apprentice worker that was working at the inn, challenged his co-workers to sit in the chair. And one of them accepted and sat in it. That afternoon, that individual was found dead not far from the inn. And they believed it to be an accident. Then, in another instance, two young airmen spent the night at the inn in the 1960s. They were hanging out, chatting, having a good time, and they were kind of like doing almost like musical chairs. Like one would sit down there for a bit, they'd get up, the next one would sit there. Just They both sat there at various times. So they both ended up dying in a car accident on the way back to the airbase. There's a few more. But they didn't have as many details, just how they died. So someone fell off a roof shortly after sitting in the chair. A woman just randomly suffered a brain tumor. And then there's another instance where someone very quickly after had a heart attack. And there were several other car accidents as well. Overall, it is said that that chair caused around 60 deaths. This is a <laughs> this is a 320-year-old chair. They don't make them like they used to. They don't make them like they used to. <laughs> but if you think of the location and the history of the chair, as well as the age, I think that statistically any chair that has existed that long in a public place would have people who died in that same frequency. Are you saying that we need some sort of test of cursed chair versus non-cursed chair and how many people die after sitting in these chairs for hundreds of years? Well, I think it's a lot like the phone number, right? Like, we don't know how many people die because of a cell phone number. I feel like you're you're taking away the scariness of this chair. Chairs can be fucked up, Lindsay. You're right. You're right. Busby infused his disgusting brain of evil into the wood. It seeped in. Yeah. And if you place your rump upon his favorite chair, <laughs> you will pay with your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the inn eventually was passed down to Tony Earnshaw in the late 1960s. And Tony decided to move the chair to the basement to avoid more people sitting in it. You know, like a reasonable person. Right. So, okay. Right. It's not 2022. It's the 1960s. So. Yeah. 258 years. Still a pretty long fucking time for a chair. Meanwhile, like my Costco chairs, I'm like, right? 
they feel kind of rickety. Told you. Like <laughs> the craftsmanship. So even though he moved it to the basement, someone still sat in it. There was a delivery driver that he was delivering something into the inn's basement. And while he was down there, he was like, okay, I'm going to take a break and had a seat, not knowing that it was a cursed chair. And some reports even say that he said something along the lines of, what's a nice comfy chair like this doing down here instead of upstairs where people can enjoy it? Literally said no one about a wooden chair that's 300 years old, but sure. <laughs> it probably looked cool, though. Like, I don't know. Old chairs, like old furniture always looks slightly cooler than nowadays furniture. But I wouldn't say that it looks comfy. No. How comfy can a wooden chair be? Right, right. But so, a few hours later, the delivery man died in a car accident. After the delivery driver's death, Tony decided to donate the chair to a museum. But he asked that it be placed somewhere where no one could ever sit in it again. Yes. So, the chair made its way to the museum, and it's called the Thirsk Museum. And they hung the chair from the ceiling so that no one can sit in it ever again. But here's where it gets a little spooky. This might not actually be Thomas's chair. Uh-oh. They had a furniture expert come in, and his name is Dr. Adam Bowett. I didn't know that was a thing, like a furniture expert. I mean, I guess Antiques Roadshow is all I think of. So he examined the chair, and he said, well, this chair was made around 1840. Hmm. Which, obviously, that was after Thomas was executed. So, was there some sort of switch made at some point that no one knew about? However, I mean, people still don't want to sit on this chair either way. Like, it's still worrisome to them. But no one knows where the real chair is to this day. I don't like that. But can I just tell you that there's a man named Will Moffat who takes this very seriously. And he started a change.com petition. It says, put Busby's stoop chair or death chair in a bonfire. His change.org petition says, Busby's stoop chair or dead man's chair is an allegedly haunted oak chair that was cursed by the murderer Thomas Busby before his execution by hanging in 1702 in North Yorkshire in the UK. The chair has reportedly killed six people over the years by the curse. Way more, my guy. I want you to burn it in a bonfire because it's an evil piece of needs to be destroyed. It is currently on display at the Thirsk Museum. I want it removed and burned in the bonfire so that the ghost can go free from hunting people. Also, the body of Thomas Busby, who cursed the object, must be dug up and cremated as well so that the curse will go away. He has a lot of, like, big feelings about it. Yeah. The people who signed it, I am very convinced that these were all Will because they're just kind of, like, keyboard gibberish. <laughs> It says, this chair is cursed. This chair is evil. Burn this evil chair. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's only 42 supporters. Aw. I know. He didn't do well. It didn't do well. <laughs> and he sent it to the UK Parliament. And it's closed, so you can't join it. Yeah. He felt really serious about it. I mean, it's, a, it's kind of a creepy chair. And when I think, you know, we're going to go back to rocking chairs because it always goes back to rocking chairs. This style chair, rocking chair, is the haunted rocking chair in my head. And it's also like the mini rocking chair that you sent me. That's what it looks like. It does. You know that we love a haunted place. So Thomas is said to haunt the inn, which is now an Indian restaurant, by the way. Hmm. Which perhaps it's not the chair at all. Ooh, spooky. And as we mentioned, this is in Thirsk in the UK. And people have reported feeling his presence inside the building and along the road where he died. It's kind of like, a I mean, they, they hung him and then left him there, like chained him up for days. So pretty brutal death. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty horrific. And I'm not saying what he did wasn't horrific. No, not at all. I just feel like maybe you don't need to traumatize literally everyone else after he died. Isn't it wild that in different times they were like, let's kill someone in the street. And people were like, let's kill a person in the street. And we're like, they wanted to see that. Yeah. That to me, I'm like, I'm like, no, thank you. I don't need that type of trauma. I've got my own. I don't want this weird version of, of justice. Yeah. I don't know. Bizarre. Yeah. So have you been there? If anyone's been there, I want to hear about it. Yes. I mean, obviously. Don't sit in the chair. Don't sit in any chairs there. Just don't sit. We do not want the evil to seep into your rump. It's a restaurant. Yeah, it's a restaurant, but don't sit. Yeah. Yeah. Order out. Take out. Take out's fine. Yeah. Well, this was a cute, a cute little shorty. A little shorty of, of haunted, ghosty, cursed stuff. 
Yeah. We have more shorts coming to you this week. So keep an eye out. If you don't follow us on social media, go ahead and do that because we'll also tell you when new episodes are coming out. We normally re- release our episodes just on Fridays, but not this week. Yep. We're celebrating spooky season a bit early. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's all spooky season. Um, well, we're celebrating Halloween a bit early, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. With all of the spooky stories. And then reminder, we have our contest going on too. It's going to end pretty soon. So if you haven't already left a review, leave us a review and then head to truecreeps.com slash contests to enter. If you've already left a review, have a friend or family member do it and mention you when they sign up on our website and you guys can win a spooky basket. And with that, have a great rest of your week. Thanks for creeping with us. After the digital... Thanks for listening. And as always, a special thank you to our patrons who support us via Patreon. Please see the link in our show notes to learn more about how you, yes you, can begin to haunt the dump, guard vortexes, or even become a scorching Sasquatch. Also in our show notes, you can find the link to our website, more information on our sources, our social media handles, and our merch store. We'd love for you to keep creeping with us. So if you like this episode, please subscribe, rate, review, and share the show with your fellow creeps and or ghosts. I beg of you. (laughs) 